This video is brought to you by Against the Flow of Mississippi. Against the Flow of Mississippi is a book about Jake Fayard, a Marine veteran who is unhappy with the political machine running the state of Mississippi. He decides to fight the corruption from the inside. Jake will face more challenges than he ever has and will stand up for what he thinks is right. His notoriously hot temper will push him to the edge of murder, along with his friend and brother Kobe Bohanovich. Together, they will fight the system and give the power back to the citizens of Mississippi. Against the Flow of Mississippi is now available on Amazon. A link to the book will be placed in the description below. Count time. Count time on the compound. All inmates are going to bunks. Beyond the Count, Life on the Compound, brought to you by former Sergeant Allen of the Florida Department of Corrections. On this YouTube channel, I will explain to you the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts of a prison. Hope you all enjoy. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you are a brother or sister correctional officer, y'all remember, be safe and we never walk alone. All right, y'all, it's another episode of Beyond the Count, Life on the Compound. Former Sergeant Allen, Florida Department of Corrections, Everglades CI, Century, New River CI, and I also worked briefly for the George County Sheriff's Department here in Mississippi. I want to talk to y'all about cell searches. I'm going to get into open bay later, but I, I want to get specific on cell searches. What you're looking for, where you're going to find it. Of course, this also, this all depends on the type of cell that you are searching, the age of the building. Age of the building plays a big part in what I'm going to say. Um, most of the prisons that had one or two man cells that I worked in. The buildings were built. Uh, the oldest one was probably in the 1970s um, to the mid 90s. So when you're gonna do a cell search, age of the building takes into effect. The reason that the age of the building takes into a good account is because things break over time. Now, first prison I started at was uh, New River Correctional Institution, Rayford, Florida. Um, New River was built in the early 80s. When it was built in the early 80s, um, it was just six open bay dorms. The last dorm was added in the mid-90s, and it's called a butterfly dorm. I'm not going to show you a picture of it or, you know, get into the complete layout of the prison because that's none of your business, honestly, and it's a security risk. But... Butterfly dorm has several places to where you can hide things. In the windows um, is a very popular place. Is is in the windows in the light fixtures. Um, in legal mail is another good place to hide stuff. Officers don't search that as much as often as they should. Um, not to mention on the inmates' person, and I'm going to get to that next. Next one will be on the, in, on the inmate's person. When you're doing a cell search, 
you need to do it in a grid search pattern. Think of this as a grid. This over here is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. You search grid one, grid two, grid three, grid four. That way you don't miss anything. You're going to walk into the cell. Hopefully, you'll have an officer with you. If you're in Florida, that's actually policy. You will have the inmate step out. You can have the inmate present and search it yourself. I err on the side of caution and prefer that you use officer safety and keep officer safety in the back of your head at all times. You have another officer with you standing at the door cell front and you have the inmate or inmates standing outside of the cell. May or may not be in hand restraints, depending on if it's a routine search, a mass search, or you're going in there for a reason. When you go in there, first thing to remember, again, this is Florida specific, what I'm going to say right here. You can't just tear everything up. You can't just flip everything unless it's a mass search. you are actually required to put it back pretty close to the way you found it. You can't just upend everything. And if you upend everything, the, good, the, the chance of you actually finding something is slim to none anyway. Um, the only thing you're going to do is annoy the inmate. And you may miss something. You just start flipping bunks and throwing things everywhere you're probably not going to find that cell phone that you're looking for. Because if you throw everything on the floor, where's that cell phone going to land? In amongst all of his personal property. And then it's found in a common area of the cell and you got one or two choices. You can take both inmates if it's a two-man cell to confinement because it's found in a common area of the cell, which means you have to figure out whose property is what that's all piled up on the floor. And if you're wrong and you don't do that property sheet right, yes, you can be sued. This is protecting you, the officer. First thing you're going to do, though, very important, is you're going to put on your PPE. You will wear gloves. I'm going to get nasty for a minute and tell you why you're going to wear gloves. Even if you're handling mail, you need to wear gloves. Every time you touch an inmate or an inmate's property, protect your hands. Now, latex gloves gives you two opportunities. Opportunity number one, safety precaution number one, it stops you from getting any bodily fluids on you. Yes, some inmates will do what they do to themselves. Are you with me? And send the secretments of their self-abuse to their loved ones on the outside or to somebody they don't like. Incoming mail, some some inmates have girlfriends or wives that will do unto themselves and put the bodily fluids on incoming mail, pictures, whatever. It sounds sick. It's disgusting. Glove up. Officer safety is number one. The whole point of you going to work is to go home. You want to go home to your family. You don't want to touch something that may have, could possibly have HIV on it. 
and then bring that home to your family or some other virus, bacteria, germs, whatever, you don't want to bring that back to your family. You don't. The whole point of this is you leave work at work in its entirety. The best way to, to do that is to make sure that you wear proper protective Glove up. Now, walk in. Most cells that I have been in, when you walk in, you have a sink and a toilet. Look in the toilet. See if you see a screen. The, the sewage system is a great place to hide contraband. Flush the toilet two or three times. Make sure there's nothing in there that's going to back the toilet up to flood the cell. But if you don't see anything, give it two or three flushes. Turn the water on on the sink. That's making sure that the water is doing what it's supposed to do and they're not hiding contraband. Look around the base of the toilet, behind the toilet, under the sink, the floor around it. Now you enter the cell completely. You may have one or two foot lockers in there. Sometimes they're welded to the floor, screwed, screwed to the floor, nailed to the floor, bolted to the floor, whatever. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're movable. Sometimes you may have drawers underneath the bunk. It depends. I've seen, I've seen it all. Open the foot locker. When you open it up, run your hands around the outer edge of the foot locker. Make sure the metal's intact. If you see a piece of metal broke off of the foot locker, that's a good indication that there may be a weapon in that cell or on that inmate. It might be a knife. Metal fatigue, metal breaks, metal can be sharpened. CO shirts are not stab proof. So well, how do you handle this? That right there is a good indication if there's a piece of metal missing from somewhere in that cell, there might be a weapon. Keep an eye out, look for it. Smell the air. Man, it smells like smoke in here. Could be tobacco. Most inmates have tobacco. <clears throat> Some inmates have drugs. Some inmates <clears throat> may be trying to burn the cell, maybe trying to burn the building down. Now it's concrete, so the likelihood of a concrete building burning down is slim to none. But hey, if they were stupid, they wouldn't be in prison. If they weren't stupid, they wouldn't be in prison. Some people just, they do stuff. Goes along with the inmate that floods his cell just to get attention. Also, if you smell smoke and you see metal missing, you know there's contraband in that cell. Now, when you go into the foot locker, let's assume everything's normal, though. You don't smell smoke and there's no metal missing and it's a routine search. You flip open the lid, grab the lid and shake it, and make sure it's attached to the foot locker. If the foot locker is locked, you can order the inmate to open it up. If he refuses, captain's usually got a key, 
a master key to every lock on the compound. So you go into the, you go into the foot locker and you search it. But you grab that that top, you shake it, make sure it's still attached. Because if it's de if it's detached from it, that's a weapon. If I take a top of a metal box and I knock you up top the head with it, it's gonna hurt. Same thing here. Check for that. Make sure it's attached. Now you're going to enter the foot locker. Let's assume it's still attached. We're still good here. There's no contraband. We're, go we're all good here. All right. We'll go through. Look, look for any, anything that they're not supposed to have. This part is Florida specific, but I'm sure it's the same in other areas. If, it, if they cannot buy it at canteen, or it is not issued by the state, or authorized by the state, they can't have it. You'll know what it is. If you see a bottle of Barks root beer in their foot locker, and you know the canteen doesn't sell 16 ounce bottles of Mark's root beer. Well, you know that's contraband. They're not allowed to have that. They can't buy it in the canteen and it's not issued by the state. Take it. Like cigarettes. If you see this and you're in a non smoking facility, most of them are. They're not authorized to have this. This is contraband, confiscated. If they have bleach in a bottle, now, most of the bleach, especially in Florida, I can tell you that the bleach is very diluted. It's like, I think it's like one part bleach and 10 parts water. So if they put a little bit in an empty bottle, they may be drinking it. Yes, inmates drink bleach, some of them. So, <laughs> Tide Pod Challenge. There, there, there you go. Thank you. You see inmates with Tide Pods, just, yeah. We'll go with that. <laughs> but if if it's if it's caustics, they're not allowed to have it more than likely. I would say every facility I've walked into, that's contraband. They're actually misusing state they're they're actually misusing uh state property. Sarge, I keep that in here to clean my cell. We give you an opportunity to clean your cell every day. You don't need to hoard bleach. There's no reason for you to hoard bleach. Some officers are going, okay, well, you clean your cell. No. Wrong, wrong answer. Contraband, confiscated. Anything that is not in its, in its original container or usage is contraband, modified. If they got a holy Bible and the first, you know, and, and Genesis and Exodus has been ripped out of it, well, guess what? They're smoking the word of God. They're making cigarettes. It's a non-smoking facility. They're, they're, that's contraband. It's modified from its original condition. Things that they may have that are authorized. Religious material. Quran. 
prayer rug, Bible, cross of Jesus. These things, when you, when I do a search, I actually take very good care to put those and, and, and treat them with respect. I try to, best I can. I'm not going to take some inmate's prayer rug and fling it across the cell. First off, you do that, you're wrong. You're asking for trouble. And there's a good chance you, you're going to have a use of force at that point. And in my opinion, you kind of asked for it. You kind of had that one coming. What I will do is, let's say I see a prayer rug draped over a foot locker. I will actually take the care to pick it up, fold it neatly, and carefully place it somewhere. Usually on a usually on one of the one of the bunks. The reason I'm doing this is because it's it's a respect thing. It is a mutual respect thing. I'm not saying I'm a hug a thug, because I certainly am not. I will absolutely do my job if the situation calls for me to do my job. Y'all can read between the lines and know what I mean by that. But I'm not going in there intentionally trying to piss them off to, to get their goat to do that. Because it's wrong. You place their religious items up there. Now you look at it. You make sure there's no contraband in it because if there's contraband, then it's modified from its original condition. And yes, it is. It, it's it's contraband at that point. You can take it if they're taking their prayer rug and you know pulling the pulling the 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 uh, sewing out of it, which most of them won't in a prayer rug anyway. They may be trying to fly a kite. They may be trying to go fishing. What I mean by fishing is, is passing contraband from cell to cell while the doors are closed and locked. Common occurrence. I've seen some good fishermen in my life in prison. At that point, it's modified. You can take it. But nine times out of ten, a prayer rug is about the most sacred thing that they have. They're not going to do anything with it. And the inmates that are Islamic or Muslim, they hold that prayer rug in such reverence that they're not going to desecrate it. So, what you do is you, you place it out of the way. You go in there and you look. Now we're going to get to the legal mail. It may be a, a big stack of legal mail. Can you search it? Yes. You can't read it. You pull out the papers, you look, it's got a letterhead on it from a lawyer. Hug a Thug Law Firm, Miami, Florida. We sue the Department of Corrections. Okay. You can't read it. But you can flip through it. Covered this in another video talking about legal mail. Nothing stopping you from doing that. Make sure there's no cutouts in the middle where they're hiding a cell phone or drugs or other contraband. No rule against that. There's nothing saying that you you can't do that. Make sure that they don't have any Sheets that are tore up. I call that fishing line. Because again, they will fish. Alright, now we're going to go to the bunk. You search the other foot locker the same. Go to the bunk. Grab the bottom of the bunk. Make sure it's still attached to the wall. Go underneath it. 
Make sure there's no contraband hanging. Grab the mat. Shake it. Run your arm across it. Or at least run your hand across it. Don't run your arm. Because you run your arm again, we'll go back to bodily fluids. Run your hand across it. See if you feel any bulges that you shouldn't feel. Make sure there's no tears in the mattress. <clears throat> if there's a tear in the mat, good place to hide contraband. If you're really unsure, get the wand. Run the wand around the mattress. As Sentry, I've seen us x-ray them. We're going to get the x-ray machine out of, the, out of the search room for staff search. We'll bring it there and we'll run mats through it. See if there's any knives or cell phones or drugs, whatever else that ain't supposed to be in there. Look up and check the lights. Pull on it. Make sure it doesn't fall open. Make sure the screws are intact. Check to see if there's any holes in if there's any holes in the wall. Make sure that the window is intact. There's no screws missing. Make sure the screws are tightly fastened. Found a lot of drugs in windows now. A lot of drugs. They'll work them screws loose. Remember, they're in there for all day and a night. They gonna come up with a way. Document anything you find. You find contraband, do a property sheet. And then write them a DR. And if it's enough contraband, hard contraband, drugs, cell phone, enough tobacco to where I worry about it, I'll tell you right now, my, my theory is this. If they got just a little bit of tobacco, I'll tell them to flush it. If they got a commercially bought pack of cigarettes, you're going to confine them. If they don't sell this, how are they going to get this? Dirty staff. You damn right, G. I'm taking you to confinement to this. Open it up, open a pack of cigarettes. I see that. You're done. Bye. You're going to confinement. I find drugs, you're going to confinement. I find a weapon, you're going to confinement. I find a cell phone, you're going to confinement. All there is to it. I'll get on the radio, call a cap. Hey, got one for confinement. Need to go ahead and take them to medical for pre confinement physical. I'll do the paperwork. I'll write the DR. Bye. You're gone. Enough said. If I find enough nuisance contraband, I may write in what's known in Florida as a CC or corrective consultation. And order the inmate to clean a cell and get rid of the trash. It's as simple as that. That's the way I personally do it. Do thorough searches. Failing to search thoroughly and properly can get you hurt. Y'all be safe.